Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, let's read the first two verses. Let's look at that scripture. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed. Let me hear you say completed. No, I, I want to hear you again. Say completed. Yeah, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Next verse. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So, on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. He rested. There is something called rest. I was trying to look up the Hebrew word for rest. It's actually Shabbat. So when we say the day of Shab Sabbath or the Sabbath is actually rest. The Hebrew word for rest is Shabbat. So Shabbat is not just rest in the normal English way of saying it. It is ceasing from. You know when you cease from being sick when you desist from being destroyed, when you desist, desist it means you no longer do it. When you cease, it means it comes to an end. So rest means to cease. I mean as in ceasing to do something, ceasing to be in a particular way. If you have been sick, rest means you cease to be sick. You come to an end of sickness. If you have been living in shame, rest means you cease from being controlled by shame. You come to an end, so rest has to do with end. End. I'm going to share with you on walking in the grace of rest. Walking, write it down, then we rise and pray. Walking in the grace of rest. Walking in the grace of rest. All right, so rise. Raise your right hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by this revelation of your word, I enter into the mystery of your rest. I accept that this word is happening to me in the depth of my life in the very core of my life that this word is coming straight to where I need rest and every obstacle is being broken down and I am ceasing from being manipulated by darkness and I'm living the way you wanted it in the name of Jesus Christ. So I speak by the Holy Spirit. The word of God says that the voice of the Lord is powerful. That by the powerful voice of the word of God. Chains shall be broken. Yokes shall be broken. Every obstacle against your rest shall become nothing. And you shall step upon your obstacle to reach your new heights. It shall be so as I speak. Key things shall melt inside of you. Your eyes shall be opened. Your mind shall be rest thought opportunities to come looking for you and you will connect the connection of the season in the name of Jesus can I hear somebody put those hands uh, just put those hands glory to God be seated be seated be seated be seated I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited I'm sharing with you walking in the mystery or walking in the grace of help of the grace of rest I've talked about rest is ceasing from. Rest is an end to something. An end to something. And number one thing about rest is this. Until there is completion, there is no ending. Because rest is end. When to say I rest from trouble, it means trouble has ended. To say I rest from sickness, sickness has ceased, has ended. 
To say, I rest from loneliness. It means loneliness has ended. For there to be rest, for there to be an end to something, then there has to be completion. The scripture says in that Genesis chapter 2, in verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Next verse. Next verse. By the seventh day, God had done what? Finish the work, finish and complete and completed and completion. They are the same thing. So God had ended his process. And once it is ended, then it has ended. Say, once it is ended, once it is completed, then it is ended. That means rest comes after completion. Am I talking to somebody? Now let's quickly look, look at one thing. Rest happens when there is completion. I've said that. The reality of rest in life is not based on our completion and completeness. Now let's talk about this. The issue of rest in the Bible is not man that finished. It's not man that completed. So rest in a true sense of it is not your thing. Am I talking to somebody? Rest in the Bible is not because man had completed. It was God who completed. So the reality, the revelation of rest is not based on your ability to complete something. It's not based on your strength. It's not, you know, so you, you, you don't have rest as a child of God because you have completed according to your strength. Listen to me, I'm talking about walking in what? In the grace of what? Rest. So rest is not based on your completion. Rest is not based on your finishing. Rest is not based on your, your, your perfection. If rest were to be based on your perfection, you will never have rest. If rest were to be based on your completion, completing everything you should complete, doing everything you should do according to how you should do it and perfectly, if that were to be the basis of rest from God as a promise, you will never have rest. I will never have rest. Only God will have rest. So rest is based on God's finished work. Halazat Talibra. Say that is good news. So in case you have been messing up and you've not been able to finish what you should have finished, there is still rest for you. This is not like permission. Say, okay, go on and be irresponsible. Well, if God has brought you to rest and you choose to go back, that is your fault. But I'm just trying to say that you cannot wake up in the morning and say, I am doomed, I am hopeless because I've not been able to finish all the things I should have done in life. By the time I was 10 years, I was supposed to do this. By the time I was 20 years, I was supposed to do this. At 30, I was supposed to marry. Or 25, I was supposed to marry. At 30, I was supposed to have all my children. At 35, I should have been a multi-billionaire. And all that and all that. And uh, this is, you know, that is not the idea of rests in the Bible. And that's not the rest that God promises us. The rest that we are talking about is a rest based on God's completion. God completed and then God gave rest. When you receive the rest of God and enter into the rest of God, you are enjoying rest, not as your labor, not according to the measure of your strength, but according to the measure of God's strength. If rest were to be based on strength, I wouldn't stand here. I am standing here enjoying the rest of God because there is one who completed so that my shame can end. There is the one who completed so that my anxiety can end. So I don't wake up in the morning and get trouble about the things I've not done and the things I have not done. I wake up in the morning and put all my life into doing what is set before me, into living as I should. But when I cannot do all that I can do, or I should do, when I have not reached everywhere I should reach, I know something. My rest does not come from my perfection. My rest does not come from my completion. My rest does not, does not come from my toil, my strength, my ability. That is why the scripture says that the rest does not belong to the swift. Am I talking to somebody? 
Say, can you rest? Stand up and say, Father, thank you. I have rest. Now, I, I just want you to speak to yourself. Thank you, Daddy. I have rest. Glory to God. Thank you. Say it the third time. Papa, thank you. I have rest. Not the rest I deserve. Not the rest I have created. The rest that is received as grace. Glory to God. Lift up the two hands. I speak to the area of your shame. Rest has come. I speak to the place of your addiction. Rest has come. I speak to the place of your fruitlessness. Rest has come. I speak to the place of your delay. Rest has come. I speak to the place of agitation and fight. Endless fight. Whatever is the fight. Oh, there is the grace of rest. I proclaim there is rest for you. I announce there is rest for you i announce that it's right for you why god completed be serious imagine if god had created us to start digging our ocean imagine if after god created you say well if you need water look for it if you need wood look for it if you need mango go look for it no if you look at the scripture god started by creating and he finished before he planted man the vision of god for man from the beginning was the vision of grace grace is that man will enjoy what man is incapable of producing i don't know have i talked to somebody remember we were talking about grace before we left now we are coming back to the place of grace how are you going to make a, a change in this season how are you going to turn things around this season that everybody's crying and everybody's looking for solution walking in the grace of what rest and it begins with a mindset you have to come to the place of understanding rest as an end of shame end of sickness end of loneliness end of trouble end of sinfulness end of addiction in dirty things end of this and end of that it's not going to come because of my strength it's not going to come no it's already there because god come god rested after he completed now let me share something with you so you know that the rest of life is God's rest. Look at Psalm 95 from verse 7 to 11. Psalm number 95 run. Verse, 11, verse 7 to 11 in NIV. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. The flock under his care. Today listen to this. Today if you hear his voice do what? Do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah as you did that day at Mesa in the desert. Today, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Today, if you hear, there is a reason why this is important, so pay attention. If you hear his word, his voice today, don't harden your heart. It means don't be rebellious. Don't walk away from the word. Don't reject the word. Don't break the word. Don't disagree with the word. Because that is what was done at Meribah and at Massa in the desert. Next verse. Where your fathers tested me and tried me, though they had seen what I did. Next verse. For 40 years I was angry with that generation. Say that generation. A generation. You have to find out which generation do you belong to. The generation that receives the word or the generation that welcomes the word. Because there is a connection between the word and the rest. Let's go. He said, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray. That means they, they run the different direction. God is here but they are there. They just, they just like to go to wrong places and wrong things. They just love what God hates and hate what God loves. They go astray and they have not known my ways. So the problem of that generation, they don't know my way. God has not said that they have not walked. The problem of that generation is not because they didn't walk. The problem of that generation is not because they didn't plant and build houses. The problem of that generation was not laziness. The problem of that generation was that they didn't know the ways of God. The problem of that generation was that 
they revolted against the word. And revolting against the word is because you don't know the ways of God. You don't know God. Next verse. So I declared on oath, not just saying, I put oath upon it. In my anger, they shall never enter my what? My rest. Which means the rest of those people was not the rest that they had to deserve by their work. They were not to rest from fights because they were strong. They were not to rest from fruitlessness because of anything. They were not to rest from hunger and shame because of their strength or lack of strength. They were to rest because of God's rest. And the only condition was what? Knowing the ways of God. Knowing God. Hearing the voice of God. Their rest was God's rest. They missed the rest because they missed the voice. That generation missed the rest. God said they shall not enter into what? My rest. Which means God's rest is already there. Can I tell you something? In this generation, in this time of pandemic lockdown, this season of the pandemic fear and all that, there is rest. This, this season of insecurity and poverty, shh, there is rest. Oh, can I talk to somebody? This season, there is rest in marriage for somebody. There is rest in health for somebody. Why? You may say, but I cannot do this. Oh, um, there is no this. Nigerian government is this. A Bomb state government cannot do this. I have not done this. I don't have this. I don't have that person. That's not the issue. The issue is that there is a rest, which is God's rest. And it's just waiting for those who will know his ways. Who will hear his voice and then enter into? So, this rest is entered into. It is not, you don't walk yourself into this rest. Let me tell you something. The hardest, the, the most hardworking person you have known in your life is not the most restful person. Am I talking to somebody? If you go back to your Sony school or the university, the most hardworking student may not be the most successful of your mates now. There is a rest. Am I saying no hard work? No. Hard work is the way of tending the garden. But the garden was not planted by you. The, gra the garden is handed over to you. So while you walk in the garden, you know, you didn't plant the tree. You are just dressing the tree. So when you wake up in the morning, it is not, it is not you that will create the blessing of the day. The blessing of the day is already there. Your own is to enter. Stand up and say, I enter. Tell yourself, I enter. Glory to God. I enter into rest from strife. I enter means it has ended. Strive and shame ended. Disgrace and lack ended. Why? I discover there is a rest that is not my father's rest. Can I tell you another thing? Rest in life is not about what your father did. And your lack of rest in life cannot be tied ultimately to what your father did not do or what your father did so if in case you come from a useless family thank god there is the god in heaven who permits you through christ to call him father so you can enter into his rest enter his rest from the things of the father from the things of the mother from the things of the generation from the things of the government, from the things of waste, you can enter into rest. Why? It's already there. It is not subject to new creation. It's already there. You don't wake up in the morning to create it. You wake up to enter it. And how do you enter? Before we talk, be seated. Before we talk about how you enter, let's first of all talk about, we have already said it. Let's repeat. How did they miss it? They missed it when they missed the voice of God. 
They missed it when they missed the ways of God. They missed it when they went their way. So how do you enter what they had missed? By hearing the voice. By listening to the voice. Let me share something with you very briefly. Glory to God. So, Libro Sandalabakata. So, the formula for entering the rest of God is hearing and submitting to what is heard. The people heard the voice of God, but they didn't submit to the voice of God. Am I talking to somebody? The people, they heard my voice. They are people whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. So I declare on oath, they shall not enter my rest. Why? Why? He said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. They heard the voice. Now hearing is not what changes you. Listen, the scripture says faith comes by hearing. But he, and hearing the word of God, yes. But just hearing alone. Otherwise, all of you will have been wonderful believers. We hear on radio, on television, on the internet. We hear. There is something else. Listen. The word listen. Let me share something. A quote in the scripture. Let's look at it. Quote. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. Matthew 17, 1 to 5. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Next verse. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Next verse. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Next verse. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Next verse. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. He didn't say hear him. Listen. You can be sitting in this place. People are talking around you. You hear them. But you are not paying attention to them. The difference between listening and just hearing is that listening is intentional. Listening leads to action. Hearing can just be entertainment. Say, I hear you. Have you heard that before? A man of God is preaching, or a preacher is preaching. I say, I hear you. Yeah, you have heard. But has it changed you? Just hearing. The scripture says, faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing the word of God. The hearing that brings faith is a hearing that is intentional. That's what I intended to say. A hearing that is intentional. You may have come to church because some friend told you, he said, this former reverend father who did church on radio, let's go and check out what is happening in this guest family. Sir. And you come. Nothing serious, but as you sit down here, you begin to listen to me intentionally. Now you are hearing, but you are not just no longer just hearing. You are hearing to make meaning out of it. You are hearing so that something can happen to you. You are hearing. That one is intentional. The word listen in Greek is akuo. <laughs> akuo is A-K-O-U-O. Akuo. The word akuo means to heed. When you talk about heed, it means pay attention to. So to listen means pay attention. It means to give audience. You're somebody, so you can hear somebody, but you don't give that person audience. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. To give somebody audience means you want to be affected. You are ready to be affected by what you hear. You are ready to take action based on what you hear. That's what it means to listen. So you give somebody audience. 
For example, you are going for financial empowerment seminar. You go and sit down. You didn't eat in the morning. You trek to that place. You are looking for ways of making a living and making some money. And you are not just hearing. You don't sit down there to hear. You sit down there to do what? You listen. That's the kind of person you see who sits on the seat and leans outward. Such a person does not slouch, does not sit like in the earth, you know, that kind of person sits on the edge of the seat. It means every word that drops, I take. Every word that drops, I take. That's listening. It's intentional. Now, the word also implies follow. Because when you listen, you are likely to follow instruction. Answer question one and any other two questions. What you see is any other two questions. But you don't know question one is the key. So you answer two questions and then by the time you come and discover at the end of it, you didn't answer question one and question one carries 60 marks and it's complex. Then you begin so by the time you know the time up, you didn't go halfway and then you did very well, but you didn't meet the target. Why? You didn't pay attention. The people of old, that generation of loss, that generation of loss, that generation of waste, that generation of poverty, that generation of failure, they missed the rest of God, not because God didn't love them, but because they didn't pay attention. The worst thing that you do in your life is that you hear the word that is to take you because God has already made the rest. God created everything by the word. It is only by the word you can enter into the rest. See, hear his voice. And now this is the solution. In case you messed it up, in case you made all the mistake, God has given you another chance. He said, this is my beloved son. It's no longer about your past. It's no longer about all that, the, the mistakes of your life. Now this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Do what? Listen to him. Now go back. If you go back to that psalm we read. He said today if you will listen to his voice. Do not. If you will hear his voice today. And God is saying in Jesus today. He said today. If you want to enter my rest. It is not by your hard work. You can work hard from morning till night. And you walk past your favor. You walk past the person who carries your help. You can be, you, I have seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of ministers. You say, hey, I just want, they just walk and walk and walk and walk. I say, I believe in work. Yes, I walk, but I don't believe in work. I believe in God. It's a mindset of the generation of the desert. It's a mindset of those who miss the plan of God. Rise up. These things should burn in your bone because there is a rest you need to enter into. There is a rest that is in front of you. And the condition is in Jesus. He says in Matthew, come to me. Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all of you who are weighed down by hopeless things. All of you who are in unprofitable labor. All of you in useless relationship. All of you in immorality and lie and deceit. Come unto me. Come out from those places. Let those things end. And before Jesus died on the cross, the first, the last thing he said is, it is finished. It is completed in me. It means in me, it is done. Therefore, enter your rest. Because until it is done, you cannot enter your rest. God finished and said the people enter into my rest. So Jesus is the finish of God. It is the completion of God. He said, come to me. Healing is finished. Come to me. Salvation is finished. Come to me. Joy is finished. It is done. Just enter. He said, take my yoke. Take my yoke means walk with me. Where I go, go with me. Yoke is what connects two animals together. Yoke is what connects you to fornication. Yoke is what connects you to the devil. When the yoke of, right, of unrighteousness is broken, you need the yoke of righteousness. It is the yoke of Jesus that will connect you to righteousness. It means you go where he goes. It means you love what he loves. And by going where he goes, you enter into his rest. Because he says, I am the Lord of Sabbath. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday, 8.30 a.m.
Champions University, and subsequently Extended Family Assembly, 10 a.m. Aired live on Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo, Venue, Goshen, Kilometer 14, Mwaniba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaimom State. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and via the Christ Radio app. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Partners and Friends of Grace Family Outreach. You can be part of this Grace Revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0907-383-8742. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people. Thank you.